Do you remember this? Just last week, this home in the Outer Banks collapsed into the ocean during a coastal storm. Not a hurricane, not a tropical storm, a strong low. It's amazing. It's stunning to watch it happen. This was actually the second home on the same street crash into the ocean in less than 24 hours. We know it's a growing concern for homeowners in the Outer Banks of North Carolina thanks to a rapidly eroding shoreline. Joining us now is journalist Jeremy Markovich. Jeremy, thanks for being with us. You know, we look at this, this problem. It's happening more frequently now. Is there anything that can be done to prevent these homes from going into the ocean, or is this just the fate that they have? Well, for now, um, it's kind of the faith that they have. Um, I mean, there are programs out there. There are people out there that are trying to re-nourish beaches in different parts along the Outer Banks. Um, there are, there are, are places where they're trying to shore up or rebuild dunes. Um, but the issue um, is the same issue that it's been for a very long time out there, which is that the island wants to move, but the permanent things you build on the island do not. So the roads tend to want to those stay in place. The houses uh, that you built are kind of staying in place, but when the island moves, uh, that's what causes all the problems. And so, so when you pretend to protect in one place, it causes problems in another place. And we look at some of these homes, absolutely beautiful, but not necessarily cost efficient to move them. There have been cases, however, of structures being moved and even uh, the promotion of getting people to move. Yeah, a long time ago, back in, back in the late 80s, there was a program called the Upton Jones Amendment, which is kind of a, a clunky name. But basically what it meant was uh, instead of waiting for your house to uh, eventually be destroyed by the ocean, if it was really dangerously close or the beach had eroded in front of your house, um, you could basically be paid to demolish it or uh, paid a little bit less to move it. Well, that program was fairly popular, but most people, people chose to demolish it and over, that only lasted about five years. That ended in 1994. So, so there's not as much of a financial incentive to want to tear these houses down. And in a lot of cases, um, the ocean just kind of does that and it creates a very, very big mess. Well, then let me ask you a question. I don't know if you, you have a good answer to this or not. I, it just, it's complicated, right? So what happens then if your home falls into the ocean and your property then basically becomes water? What, what are your options at that point? You don't really have many. Um, you know, one of the interesting things was uh, there are really property battles over, over what happens to the property. I mean, um, the idea that a town could force people to tear down their homes. Um, this happened in Nags that about 10 years ago when a similar situation happened there for about eight or nine homes. Um, they were dangerously close and the city wanted them torn down. They wanted them demolished because they were going to fall into the ocean. Well, homeowners banded together and said, we know we have to save our property. We have to be given the option or compensated for our property. You can't just take it away. You can't just get rid of it. So all of those things are really complicated. Um, the, the, the only thing that is kind of sure in all of this is that the island continues to erode. I mean, the house that you saw fall into the ocean there, um, when it was built in 1980, it was about 430 feet from the actual ocean, from the, you know, the water lapping up. Um, it was behind dunes. There was vegetation on the dunes. And over time, over 42 years, it went from being 430 feet away to 47 feet away. And then, as you saw, directly in the ocean, and the ocean took it, collapsed it, and it was gone within minutes. And I understand it's partly the homeowner's responsibility for the cleanup, because I think a lot of people wonder what happens to that home once it's in the water. Yeah, so what you have is you have the National Park Service that, uh, that runs the Cape uh, Hatteras National Seashore right there in Rodanthe, kind of runs all down the Outer Banks. Um, when the house collapses, all of that debris gets caught in a southern current and just gets thrown all over the beaches for about 15 to 20 miles. And this happens fairly quickly within like a day or two. Um, so what the National Park Service does is they have to go out and find volunteers, a lot of locals from the beach. Uh, they don't want kids because they don't want kids stepping on nails or anything like that. But they have to get a lot of locals to help go clean this up. Also, the homeowners are responsible for this, too. So they have to hire contractors and pay for this when their house falls into the ocean. Um, so it is it is uh, definitely something that costs a lot of money and creates a very large mess on top of the fact that these houses have septic systems. And that also creates a kind of a, maybe an unsanitary mess as well. Absolutely. Well, Jeremy Markovich, I wish we had more time. We have so many questions about this, but we thank you so much for joining us and helping us understand a few. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, it's... I'm
speechless, Alex. He said that that home that we watched go into the ocean last week used to be more than 400 yeah. feet from the water's edge. So what a change. Oh, it my goes gosh. to show you how, you know, because everybody goes, well, why would you build that close? The point is they didn't build that close. I, I don't know if it's one of those situations where you kind of roll the dice. And as a yeah. homeowner, if you lose your home, you lose your home and the property's gone at that point, too. There's no land left. I don't know. You know, it's everybody wants to be by the beach, mm. but obviously it comes with big problems.